Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Leveling Up Vodcast, which um, is our video podcast where I get to interview business owners like Darren Mitchell, who you can see here, who've done something strategic or out of the box to transform their business. So as I mentioned, we do have Darren Mitchell on today's episode, and Darren is the, the founder of uh, Potential Unleashed Coaching and Development, which is based down in Melbourne, in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Um, and also, Darren, you're the brains and the voice behind the Exceptional Sales Leader podcast, which, as you say, is available on all good podcasting uh, channels. Welcome, Darren. And some, and some dodgy ones as well, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Jasmine. Great, great to have, uh, great to have a chat to you today. Good to see Excellent. you. Excellent. So, um, before we, uh, you know, the first question is always tell us a little bit about you and your business. But before we do, um, yeah. I just want to share why I've invited you onto the podcast today. So, for the for the viewers watching us, um, Darren and I actually crossed paths many years ago. Now feels like a long time ago down in Melbourne, and we were uh, both a lot younger. Um, we're both a lot younger, a lot more energetic. No, we're still energetic. And um, Darren's one of those people, I'm sure you've got these people in your lives where you cross paths with someone and you just, you get inspired and energized every time you speak with them. And Darren has absolutely been that person for me and has been um, helping me, you know, build and be aspirational with Level Up. And I thought, you know what, if someone knows a thing or two about transformation, it's Darren Mitchell. So that's why Darren is here. Um, Darren, not only has have you transformed your own business it's, it's been up and running for a little while now but your your day job is to help other people transform whether they're in sales or you know the leadership sense so I thought you'd probably bring some really great stories and some great insights um, to the podcast so that is what brings us here so thank you for joining us <laughs> no, thanks for the invitation it's um and look it's been I can't believe it's been I was just thinking about this the other day it's probably I reckon close to nine years ago that we first crossed paths down in Melbourne. And I don't know about you, but the, the older I get, the more wise I get, the more experience I get, the quicker the time goes. It's it's just frightening, right? And I can't believe, like my, as I was saying just before we recorded, you know, my, my daughter's now, one's in uni, just about to start a medical um, medical degree, and the other one's doing year 12. And, and it wasn't, but what seemed like a short couple of years ago, they were both in um, both in primary school, so time flies, absolutely flies. But hey, it's been great, um, been great connecting with you and watching your growth and trajectory upwards exponentially over the last few years as well. So um, it's, it's awesome to be here. Thank you. You've played a part of that, so uh, <laughs> I'm very grateful. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about yeah. you. So tell us about your business. When did it start? Where's it at today? Tell us everything. Everything. Well, how long's the pod? How long's the podcast for? <laughs> as long as we need <laughs> yeah but also we want to we want to make sure that people want to keep watching as well so i'm not going to bore them with throwing out stuff um but i'll give you the reader's digest version right so my background is is corporate sales so 20 plus years in corporate sales um in business to business selling and the last 10 years of my career was pretty much running sales teams in in big corporates to big um ict companies in um we won't give the uh, the names, but we'll give you the initials, Optus and Telstra. Um, and through that, through that process, uh, I got to learn a lot, not about, not just about myself, but also about, uh, about teams, about businesses and what makes our successful businesses sustainably successful. Uh, and back in 2011, I had an opportunity to be part of, at the time, Telstra had this top talent program, which was designed to, you know, take the identified top talent, uh, top uh, right-hand quartile, uh, you're the next potential directors, blah, blah. Um, I went through that process for about a year. And what was really interesting was I had access to an executive coach. And I'd always been really interested in, from a sales leadership perspective, I was really interested in the development side of, of that, really helping people extract the potential and, and particularly taking people from different backgrounds who maybe didn't have a selling background and helping them transform in terms of uh, the way they go about business and, and becoming a better version of themselves and being successful in, in selling. So out of that executive coaching experience, I realized that, hey, there was two things that came out of it. One, I was really passionate about developing people. And two, I love this thing called coaching. So that started me on a journey of trying to find some form of accreditation or some sort of course that I could do or a qualification to help me with the development of, of sales teams and salespeople. 
And over that period of time, since 2011, it's kind of evolved into, well, my background's been in corporate sales. I've worked a lot with sales leaders. I've been a sales leader myself. And I've also gone through, I guess, the ups and downs of, of the challenges of being a sales leader in a big organization, which let's face it, with not a lot of mentoring or support. And sometimes it can feel like you're all at sea. You're literally being thrown to the sharks and said, hey, you've been a great salesperson. You've been a top individual contributor. I reckon you could be a great sales leader or leader just in general. Go do that and go teach your team how you've become successful. And many people find the transition and the transformation too much of a chasm. And that's why a lot of them go back to, you know what, I'd just like to be a, an individual contributor because it's safe and at least I know that. Um, and so what I identified with is there's not a lot of uh, help for individuals out there to make that transition or at least help them make that transition so they can understand, you know what, to be a sales leader or to be a leader of people, particularly if you come from an environment where you're a peer, there's a big gap and there's a big jump you've got to make. And a lot of the skill sets are not the same as being an individual contributor. So that's what, I, that's what I started to do back in, well, really back in 2011. And it's kind of evolved since I left corporate in 2015. I've just continued to do that. So today I work with, um, I work with sales leaders. But interestingly, as I was talking to you last week, I also work with a lot of leaders outside of sales. But what's really interesting about that is a lot of the principles around leadership that I talk about and I teach um, are transparent across multiple different industries. And it doesn't just apply to sales, for example. Um, so today, most of my time spent uh, either one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching leaders to help them make that transition and also working with leaders who have been in the leadership game for a little bit, but haven't, they might have plateaued. So very similar to what you, you do in terms of the level of how do we actually help businesses get to the next level? What I do is I help, how do we get leaders to the next level? Because they know there's another level to get to because there always is another level to get to. So one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, mentoring, but also um, I get the opportunity to work with teams as well. So help them with uh, things like emotional intelligence, negotiation, influence, pitching, all hosts of things. So it's, a, it's an eclectic mix of what I get involved in today. Love it. it sounds like a lot of fun, Darren. And um, when we speak, I'm always, yeah, as I say, energized and inspired. Um, I do want to talk about coaching. But before we talk about that, um, I'm curious to just touch on what you mentioned before about that, that leap, that chasm um, from individual contributor to leader. And we see this happen, as you say, not just in sales, almost universally across the board. So just because you're an expert in something, and it could be something extremely operational, um, you know, in my experience, I've seen this happen in IT a lot. Um, just because you're a subject matter expert, suddenly you're thrown um, to the wolves and in the deep end of, okay, now you can manage people. And it's not always the same skill set. Um, and you see a lot of people actually have the courage to go back to being an individual contributor. So in terms of, you know, there could be people watching this going, that's me, I'm the individual contributor. Do I want to grow or not? What are those skills that you need to step up into leadership? And what, so how do you help people make that transformation? It's a really, it's a really interesting question, and I'd be doing, I'd be doing the whole industry a disservice to say it's just one thing, right? Yeah. But based on experience, and look, a lot of it's going to be individual because a lot of people have, they'll have different experiences, they'll have different beliefs, different values, different backgrounds, etc. Um, so it's going to be different for a lot of people in terms of the specifics. But if I was to, if I was to say there was one core theme across uh, many different industries, many different positions from individual contributor leadership it would be the fact that um, a lot of people fail to make the transition because they're afraid to let go and not be the center of attention. Now I say that really respectfully because a lot of people, particularly in sales, they're used to uh, being the, I guess, the master of their own destiny, hitting their own target, getting the accolade at the end of the year, walking across stage as the number one salesperson of the year, rah, rah, how good am I? All the lights are on me. Yeah. As soon as you make the transition into a leadership position, you've now got responsibility, not only for yourself, but a team of people. And so one of the key skill sets that I had to learn was it's no longer about me. And in fact, the more I do this, I realize even as a leadership coach, it's never about me, never has been about me and never will be about me. It's all about how can I serve the team? How can I create an environment so the team can be successful? And, and as my company name is, how can I help them maximize and unleash the potential of, of themselves and also the team. So the biggest challenge is, as I say, and I had this conversation yesterday with a group because these guys were coming from being part of a team all of a sudden elevated into a leadership position. So 
Day one, they were a, uh, a peer. Day two, they're now the leader of that peer group. Oh my God, what do I do now? How do I become a leader? Well, the first and foremost is you've got to do things like build trust. And just because you've got a title of leadership, it means that somebody's recognized you as perhaps having potential to maybe one day make a difference and lead a, lead a great team and create sustainable results. But it doesn't come just because you've got a title. That's the beginning. I remember my very first sales manager role, my, my uh, manager at the time, Danny, said to me, this is day one. He said two things to me. He goes, first of all, welcome to the bottom uh, row of bottom rung of the ladder. You're now starting again, right? Here I was thinking I'd made the I'd made the you know the leadership ranks. How good is this, right? Number two, he said, "Well, who's your who's your successor?" Day one, and so what I learned from that conversation, I've taken that through ever since, is that you know we've always got to be looking for uh, likely successes for us, which means we have to take our eyes off ourselves and put it on our team. We have to focus on how do we develop our team and how do we help them become better versions of themselves based on them wanting to do that, of course, um, which means we have to take ourselves out of the picture and sometimes uh, get behind the scenes rather than say, something coming in front of the camera. And for a lot of people, that's a really hard transition to make. And I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of people over the last number of years that have made that decision to say, you know what, I've, I've tiptoed through, I've, I've dipped my toe in the water of leadership, but I'm not getting the accolades that I was used to. I don't necessarily like that. I don't think I want to transform. It's really not for me. And as you said, that takes courage to go back. And I applaud those people for doing that mm -hmm. because I, I say this to a lot of people and all of my, my clients and on my podcast, leadership's not for everybody. It's not easy. And it's certainly not for the faint hearted. And sometimes you've got to put your ego to the side. You've got to realize that it's not about you but you've got to earn the right to lead your team. And the way you do that is by looking for opportunities to serve them and building that level of trust with them to the point where they will want to follow you um, to the ends of the earth. And that's, and that's the challenge. I love it. I love that, you know, it, that mentality of it's, it's not about you. Um, it's about the team. And I actually would say that also works for customers as well. It's actually not about your company. It's about them. What do, what do they want? Meet them where they're at, surprise them, delight them. Um, so you know, it's, it's never about us. <laughs> it's a great, and it, it just, just, just to take that point, it's, um, you know, when I'm working with sales teams, they often talk about, oh, you know, we've got this best, we've got the best product, we're market leading here and blah, blah. And I said, well, who cares? Do your customers care? They couldn't give a rat's, you know what, right? I said, and, and this is, this is a, sometimes a really difficult thing to, to understand is sales when it comes to it is the ultimate form of service. And I said, if you think about sales, what you're doing is you're identifying a problem in the marketplace or a potential problem. And if you can articulate that problem to a potential customer better than they can themselves, then guess what they're going to do? Unconsciously, they're going to think, oh, Jasmine must have a solution, potential solution to my problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll have a conversation with her and that's how sales naturally starts to evolve. So again, it's, it's, not, about, it's not about you. It's not about having the best product. It's not about having the biggest this or biggest that it, because who cares? It's about what sort of problem you can solve and how can you serve people and how can you serve a customer? How can you serve a community? Yeah, I really love what you just said about sales is a service. So I think we've come a long way um, as a, you know, economy or whatever, um, but there is still that stigma. And I don't know if you face into this in your, in your world, but sales is icky, sales is yuck, marketing, it's all lies, it's all buzz, it's all fluff. Um, but saying sales as a service is almost completely flipping that mentality. How, how do you get people to kind of realize that? It's, um, it's an interesting one because I think you're right. Sales, is, sales still today has this icky sort of connotation. And mm -hmm. you think of sales, and I often ask people, when you think of the word sales, what do you think of, right? And they'll give you all sorts of different answers, but it's never really positive. They never say, oh, sales is the greatest profession on the face of the earth. Sales is probably the most uh, well-paid profession on the face of the earth for those that can get really good at it, right? And so it has to, people have to get over the, I guess, the, um, the blockage in their own head that sales is bad, right? Sales is just a natural evolution. And if you look through history, sales has been around forever and a day. Yeah? If you've got a partner, as you and I both have, at some point, one of us got sold, right? And guess what? Well, I've been married like coming up to March, 26 years, right? So yeah. things, things are good. It's all good. Um, so sales, it, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. It's just a natural evolution of a conversation. 
but it's the psychology behind it to say, if I'm going into a conversation and all I want to do is I want to sell you this bottle, right? I don't know whether you need the bottle, but my objective is to sell this bottle. And this is where the issue comes in because a lot of companies force their sales teams to focus on the target, hit the target, hit the target, hit the target. And therefore there's this implied pressure to have to go out and market this product, whether the customer wants it or not, versus flipping it on its head and saying, is there a problem that's in the marketplace that I can solve that potentially my solution might be able to fit? And if that's the case, it makes it a lot easier because what is it? You're having a conversation. And this is the other thing that people don't get is if you're having a conversation and I identify that you've got a problem and I potentially have a solution, then wouldn't it be true that it would be a complete disservice by me not sharing what a potential solution is? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's just a natural conversation. Now, whether you end up taking it or not, it's another thing entirely. And yes, we can talk about handling objections and all that rah-rah, but at the end of the day, if, the, if there's a, and this comes back to the basis of trust, if people know you, they like you, they trust you, chances are they'll listen to what you've got to say because you've established a level of credibility. And this is what I work with teams on. And this is what I work with leaders on. You've got to establish your level of credibility. Otherwise, with respect, you're faking it, right? Yeah. And we all know what happens when you fake it. You literally don't make it. Regardless of what people say, there's no such thing as fake it till you make it. Yeah. Exactly right. And I think it is no mistake that everything that we do here at Level Up, whether it's a strategy or a marketing plan or whatever it may be, we always start very first question is the why. Hmm. Why actually back way back, why are you even in business? Why are you here doing this job? Um, because it's much easier to have that sales as a service mentality when you genuinely believe in the, the value of the bottle and the water. Yeah. <laughs> You're you're actually helping people, you know, fill a void in their life and helping them improve. Um, Absolutely. And so it's, not, it's not a hard sell, uh, so to speak, anymore. And how many times when you ask that question do people look at you like, Yeah, every time. <laughs> because it, so it's... Weirdly, Darren, weirdly what happens is that every time um, people give me this quizzical look like, I don't know my elevator pitch on the spot, and then they stop and they reflect and they give the most beautifully articulated answer because that passion is in there. It is the yeah, absolutely, absolutely because people people don't necessarily buy what you do; they buy why you do it. Correct. Right? And if you can become an what I call an attractive force, right, that people just want to be around, mm -hmm. and it's not about having all the buzzwords. It's not about driving the great car, having the big house, and all that sort of stuff. It's about are you genuine? Do you generally show empathy? Do you generally care about people? And are you talking? Are you talking a level of logic that people can relate to? Yeah. It's 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 that's and that's the art of I guess the art of anything communication really, whether it be leadership, sales, running a running a consulting business, working for a government agency. It's all the same. It's communication, and that's what a lot of people don't get. Yes, yes, it's a very good call out. Um, I want to change gears. Um, slightly and talk about coaching so mm -hmm. there's lots of um, you know and I see it all the time and a lot of people ask me if I'm a coach I am not um, but there's lots of business coaches out there so we all kind of there seems to be a demand for transformation and for growth at a personal level um, and I suppose as a as a coach particularly in the sales and the leadership space can you help us sort of decipher how do we determine who's the right coach for us? What should we be looking for? Um, do you have any tips? <laughs> um, good question. It's a really open question, right? Yeah. It's like how long's a piece of string and, you know, how many fish are in the fish market? Well, there's um, no directory, right? Like you don't... <laughs> Well, there is no directory. And what's interesting is even, even today in 2021, the, I guess the coaching industry as an industry is still not regulated. Right, so you don't have to have a qualification. You don't have to be part of a, a professional body. Right. And sometimes for some organisations, that adds a level of credibility and industry cred. Uh, so a lot of people look for that. But essentially, when when looking for a coach, it it comes down to fundamentally. And you ask this question of your clients, you know, why are you in business? One of the first questions to ask is why why are you looking for a coach? What is it that you're looking for? Right. Why why do you think? You need a coach now. Um, having and I've changed this view over over a long period of time. I used to think that uh, not everybody needs a coach, right? <laughs> now this is quite biased. Now I believe that in some capacity, everybody can can do with a coach. Now whether that's a, a paid coach or at least a mentor, somebody you can rely upon to give you a perspective, which is a third person perspective, 
Um, because I look at this and say, well, if, if people who are highly successful and take the world's best tennis players, right? We're about to have the Australian Open down in Melbourne in a couple of weeks. Uh, Roger Federer, even though he's not coming coming out, he still has coaches, not a coach, coaches. He has a mindset coach. He has a fitness coach. He has a tennis coach. Why? Because he is, he is focused on exponential improvement and never-ending improvement. So he's hoping to exponentially improve, but he also knows that he wants to incrementally improve every single day. In order for him to do that, he can't necessarily self, uh, self-reflect and self-assess where he's at. He needs somebody from a third person perspective to give him ideas about what he's doing well and what he's potentially not doing so well. So that's why he brings in coaches so he can keep on top of his game. Now, if, if you're looking to improve in whatever area, one of the key uh, questions to ask is, uh, if, I, if I was to improve in one area, what would that area be? And who do I know within my sphere of influence who I could go and have a conversation with potentially to start a coaching relationship or a mentoring relationship, right? So a lot of people will go out and they'll advertise and say, I'm, a, I'm an executive coach or I'm a business coach and I can take care of absolutely everything, right? <laughs> Which is great because you become a generalist. Um, you've got to become a specialist. You've got to really look for, okay, where do you specialize? And that's why uh, despite much, um, <laughs> much internal challenge and, and trying to throw it away, I, I still stuck with uh, sales, sales and sales leadership. Hence, I started the Exceptional Sales Letter podcast because that's my, that's my niche. That's what I know. Mm-hmm. But I still, as I said, I still work with clients that are outside of, um, outside of the sales realm because the principles are the same. So when it comes to looking for a coach, do I think everybody can do with a coach? Absolutely. But you've got to be really specific on what it is that you're looking to improve. Now, it could be you're looking to take your performance, which is already at a high level, to another level entirely, but you just need something to be unlocked to help you get over that that hurdle. So a coach, a third person, a mentor, somebody you can soundboard is a perfect person to be able to do that. Why? Because they're not involved in your day-to-day. They're not family. They're not a friend. They can have the conversations that you need to have with them, right? To tell you when you need to pull your finger out, right? And they'll give you the, the what I call the duck's guts in terms of feedback, but they're there to serve you, right? Um, uh, and what the danger is, a lot of people look at the gurus and say, oh, you know, I'd love to work with Tony Robbins or I'd love to work with Bob Proctor. Or I'd love to work with uh, Mark Boris, right? All that sort of stuff. These guys are, these guys are uh, almost unattainable for the average person, but it doesn't mean you still can't get access to them. So when we're talking about coaching and mentoring, you don't necessarily just have to work with an individual. There's a whole host of people you can actually tap into, whether it be their podcasts, their blogs, their videos, their courses, to get information to help you move in the one direction. The key thing, though, above all else, is you've got to understand, okay, what is it that I want to do? Where is it that I want to improve? And how can I go about improving? And often my experience has been, uh, certainly the people I've been working with, is they bring me on because um, it's I'm down to earth, I'm pragmatic, I tell it like it is, but I help them make that next step. And I'm not. it's not about, and this is where a lot of people make the mistake around coaching, it's not about taking somebody from here and then in three months making a massive transformation where... They go from zero to hero. It's the small incremental steps. It's almost like the daily disciplines that we develop. And what a coach does, they keep you accountable. They keep you on track. They get you to measure and focus on the things you need to focus on. Uh, and when you stop working with them, it could be after three months, six months, depending on the, on the tenure. Uh, what you've got is a platform that you can continue to develop and grow, which is where the transformation actually comes from. Really that kind of question. because it's not it's not like a fad diet you're not going to get a coach and transform immediately although you probably will experience um you know changes and a fresh perspective straight away which i i mean yeah. i personally find really valuable um and something that i mean you know you know i love all things like market research and customer research and doing health checks with businesses because having that independent you know, perspective of your business is so valuable, yeah. so valuable. Because when we spend, we're so passionate about our business, we spend time on it, uh, sorry, in it as opposed to on it, we, we yeah. have blind spots every time. So I think, yeah, great tips there. So figure out what you want to, what area you want to grow in and then find a coach who specializes in that. And yep. then, you know, don't, don't think it's going to be an overnight success. It's a process. Habits take time. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, there, there, there might also be some other things to consider, particularly if you're, 
uh, whether it be in an organization or whether you're in a business. And because you're, as you said, because you're so focused on being in the business, you may actually not know where are some blind spots. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the really important things is to get some feedback. So from people who you trust and respect, who you know have your best interests at heart, get some feedback on what they think you're doing well and where you think you could improve because that will often give you an insight in terms of, okay, I need to improve my, my public speaking capabilities, right? I think I'm a great public speaker, but based on feedback, right, really tangible feedback, I really suck, right? So this is where, and that feedback could be the catalyst to say, okay, let's go and look for somebody who can help me develop a message, improve the way I provide presence in, in a public speaking situation. So getting feedback from people who you know and you trust is a great way also to identify things that you could work on, not just your self-reflection. Because let's be honest, um, <laughs> not everybody is as self-aware as they would like to think. We're all fabulous. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So it's it's but but it's finding that person or those people who you can have in your say your inner circle, who you can trust to give you the information that you know you need without saying, I can't believe you said, I thought we were friends, right? It's it's the people who can give you that and still maintain that level of relationship because it's based on trust. Yeah. And I mean, you could add to that and we've seen things like, you know, 360 degree surveys, but you could add your team members in there. Um, maybe if you've got a good relationship, some customers that you've worked with can can give you some feedback and potentially it might it may blindside you, but there's only growth from there. Um, so it's only a good thing, but it, I think, I mean, People go, oh, they shriek a bit. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hear bad news. I'm very vulnerable. I don't want to expose myself in that way. So do you have any tips for helping people, I guess, make that leap to, to ask for feedback? Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a cliche, I know, but I often talk about the fact that we, as leaders, we want to become feedback-seeking machines, right? And if we can get really good at seeking feedback, first of all, but then in the process, the law of reciprocity will kick on, kick in. Mm -hmm. And through that process, you'll find that people will be more receptive to receiving feedback. So as leaders, if we can create an environment where feedback almost becomes expected, if not demanded, then that's where you start to see incremental improvement and people are looking for what's the next level we can get to because they've got an insatiable desire to improve and be better today than they were yesterday, but not as good as they're going to be tomorrow. Yes. Now, to do that, you've got to be able to have those conversations to say, you know what, you're doing really well here, but if you just tinker around this area, I reckon we could unlock some potential to really take it to the next level in the next 30 days, right? So let's try this, that, and the other thing. So that, that's what we need to have. It also comes down to a mindset, right? Because I've, <laughs> I've dealt with many people over the years that have, um, let's be honest, they've arrived. They're, they've literally arrived. And they will, they will have the conversation. They'll say to me, Darren, you know what? I've, I've pretty much learned everything I'm going to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm done. Right? Now, now we know what happens with those people. Typically, they'll start to plateau and then they'll start to go down. Sometimes they'll go down like that, some, but eventually they go down. Great leaders, great people, high performers, exceptional performers are ones that always know that they've never arrived. It's a constant evolution of getting better and better and better, right? They never arrive at success because success is not the destination. It's always the, the person they become along the journey. And it's the, it's the reflection on how far they've come, which is the real success. It's not the, it's not the accolade. It's not winning the, the top sales person of the year. It's not getting the number one in whatever. It's, it's the process of becoming the person you are. That is uh, it's where it kicks in. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you see it like with the best entrepreneurs, best salespeople, they're, they're never satisfied. And I don't mean that in a pessimistic way, but they're, they're hungry. They're just hungry for more. What more can I learn? What more can I do? Yep. And they're the ones who have, make that step change. As you say, they're exponentially growing. So yep. I think that's a really good um, takeaway from yeah. this, this podcast. Beautiful. All right. So I want to quickly talk about your business. So you've been in business since 2011 or 2015. When did you start Potential Unleashed? I started the company in 2011. Uh, but I left corporate full-time in 2015. Yes. Okay. So you've been 10 years, 10 years in the game. Oh, it'll be 10, yeah, it'll be 10 years later this year, I think. I think it was about November I set it up. Excellent. <laughs> We're almost nine, nine, 10 years. Um, how, as a business owner, how has your business changed and what have you learned along the way? Um, it's, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot. 
<laughs> and what I've learned, just what I've just what I've talked about there, it's actually it's actually a journey. It is literally a journey. Um, and you find out a lot about yourself. You find out a lot of uh, a lot about things that you thought you were good at, but you had some serious blind spots that you have to face uh, on a regular basis. But you also get to find out a lot of things about about yourself that maybe you didn't necessarily realize. Right? Some things you might have been passionate at, passion passionate about, but you didn't necessarily get access to to be able to express that in in a previous previous role. Like I often say to people that if I hadn't have left um, the corporate world in 2015, I would never have had the opportunity to deal with the people I have over the last five or six years. I would never have worked in the industries that I've worked. I wouldn't have met some of the, the best people I consider on the planet and built relationships with them. Um, so it's, it's, all meant, it's all been meant to happen, right? So I, I don't believe anything happens by chance. It's a bucket load of work and by no means are we anywhere near where we want to be because it is still a journey. Um, but I look back and I've always said, I, I don't want to look back towards the end of my life and sit back and regret things that I didn't do or didn't take a chance. So um, it's, still a, it's still a work in progress and there's still lots of things that I want to, I want to do. Uh, but the biggest, the biggest learning for me or the biggest lesson is uh, having to transform as an individual. And, and continue to, and I always, I always, I guess, intellectualize this when I was running sales teams that it wasn't about me, but there was still this little element about, I mean, I'm, I feel comfortable on the leader of the team. So there was a certain um, prestige that was associated with that. Yes. Now, that I'm, now that I'm running a business, I get to work with leaders. It's, it's really, you know what, it really isn't about me at all. Mm -hmm. um, but it's how I can continue to add value to the to the leaders out there to individual contributors who are looking to become leaders um, and continue to develop content and do that on a regular basis so um, another big lesson i've learned is that you know what we can use technology to our best advantage and you don't have to travel um, and there's there's opportunities everywhere certainly for business owners and leaders to use technology that's right at their fingertips uh, and not have to jump on a plane not have to drive copious amounts of hours to get to a certain meeting it's it's there's a lot of flexibility. So we, we have to be flexible and we have to embrace whatever's thrown at us and know that there's a know that there's an answer um, because there'll be a seed in, in every opportunity that's presented to us, whether that be an actual opportunity or an opportunity disguised as a problem or a challenge. Um, but, it's, uh, but it's been adaptable. And, and I, I'm still evolving. Um, I've, I've, look, I've been in corporate for... 20 odd years right so it's still there's still little elements of of corporate in me Take it loose. <laughs> like even 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 today i'll i'll be doing something during the day and it won't be necessarily related to the business it might be some personal stuff and i'm thinking i've just got this feeling in the back of my head you know what i should be doing an email or something i should be making a phone i should be doing something right because this is work hours Creating um, a public pack right now. yeah so it's um but it's look it's an evolve it's an evolving uh beast if you like and uh, certainly enjoying the journey so far and hopefully we'll continue to. Beautiful. All right. Well, we're almost done, but I just want to end today's discussion with um, any advice you would give for anyone who's watching this podcast today who's thinking, you know what, it's time. I'm, I'm going to transform personally. I'm, I'm wanting to go from A to B. What are your top tips? Uh, the first question is why? Why do you want to, why do you want to transform, right? Yep. Now, a lot of people, when they when you ask them that question, it's, oh, because I want the title or I want the prestige of the income or the pay rise and, and that sort of stuff. But really spend some time investing in yourself in terms of why is it that you want to transform? It's not, it's not the title that's going to be important because once you've got the title, then what? Once you've got the pay rise, then what? Yeah. It's really delve into why, why do I want to do this? And I'll often say... Many people have their to-do list, but very, very few people have a to-be list. So when you're thinking about a, a transformation, wanting to take the next step, who is it that you want to become, right? So Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn, the great American philosopher, used to say all the time that uh, for people in business and for people in sales, right, they have these great big grandiose dreams, the big BHAG, I want to hit a million dollars of sales this year, right? Um and it's not, it's not the achievement of that. It's the person who you are forced to become along the way that when you reach that destination, you are now worthy of holding the responsibility that comes with mm -hmm. the title of having that million dollar sale or having the title of sales leader or having the title of business owner. 
Yes. It's the responsibility that comes with that. So think about why you want to do that. And also think about, okay, what do you want to be, right? Why do you want to, why do you want to be that? And who do you want to be, right? And then set in place some, some steps where you can say, and it doesn't have to be boiling the ocean. It's about how can I, how can I look to make some improvements today? I don't have to get there in three months. In fact, I don't have to get there in three days. I'm going to enjoy the, enjoy the journey because it's through the journey that's where the, the real lesson comes in. So, but the key, the key thing is the first question that many people don't ask is why do I want this, right? And I'm sorry, it can't be for the title and it can't be for the pay rise. There has to be another reason because we're not motivated by that. We are motivated as humans by a lot more intrinsic things. You've got to just tap into that and find out what that is for yourself because it's going to be different for many different people, right? And so maybe that's, at different stages of your life as well. 100%, 100%. So they're the, they're the, I guess, the two key things that a lot of people don't look at. Why am I doing this and who do I want to become? That if you answer those two questions, then, hey, things are not necessarily going to fall into, into place. But what that will do is you'll have a much clearer idea of what your future self will look like. It will now start to open up maybe some opportunities that, okay, I'll go and talk to Jasmine because I know she's an expert in, in, in transformation of, of businesses and she can help me put a business plan to help me on the journey to becoming the person I want to become, right? So that therefore, they start to look at the people who potentially can help them along that journey. That would be the best level of advice that I can, I can give. It's almost like having your own personal strategy. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, and the, well, the other one which, which just came to me then is... Um, many people make the mistake of comparing themselves to other people. And yeah. whether that be a, another business person who perhaps is in your eyes further advanced or they're achieving high levels of success or somebody in a, in a business that is being promoted and they're a lot younger than us. Oh, oh my God, I could never be like that. Look at them, look what they've got. Oh my God. And they start to have this conversation about, I can never be like that, right? And that's, that's, that's not good. So the only person you need to compare yourself with is the person staring back at you in the mirror. That's it, right? Don't play the comparison game. If anything, look to other people as examples, as models of excellence that you can say, okay, how has Jasmine transformed from where she was to where she is now? And how can I model some of the strategies and some of the tactics that she's used to do that? And how can I implement that into my own business, in my own approach? That's completely different to saying, oh my God, I'm envious of what Jasmine's done, right? That's exactly. a dangerous game and we should never do that. So modeling excellence is, is a phenomenal thing. So there's three tips. <laughs> know why, uh, know who you want to become and find a model who you can, uh, who can model yep. off and emulate. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Darren. I, I as, as expected, inspiring, energizing as per usual. Um, now, Potential Unleashed, what is the, the website if we want to check it out? So it's interesting, uh, Potential Unleash is my business, but my brand is darrenmitchell.com.au. So I, That's easy to yeah, remember. Yeah, darrenmitchell.com.au. And can we find the Exceptional Sales Leader podcast there? You can. Uh, you can also find it on all the reputable podcasting platforms, uh, but also just go to LinkedIn and type in uh, Darren Mitchell. I'm, in, I'm there and there's also a link into the podcast in, uh, in LinkedIn. And it's a great podcast. I personally recommend it. And nice sort of bite-sized pieces as well. Sort of, you Thank know, 15-minute kind of podcast, just a little inspiration for your day. Um, as Darren said before, it's great too. You don't you can tap into experts without having one-on-one -on -one coaching with them. Um, and listening to podcasts is certainly something that I do. And I, I use it as a bit of reflection and downtime as well. And I start the day um, you know, ready, guns blazing. So awesome. add, add Darren's podcast to your list. And Darren, you've got a big, you know, we don't say big, hairy, audacious goal, but, you know, you've got a big goal for this year, which is uh, 100 clients in a year. Uh, so you're looking to even transform yourself and how you do your business this year. So I'm really um, looking forward to see how you go with that, actually. I think, I think, you'll, I think you'll smash it. Thanks, Jasmine. Big goal. It, um, it's, a, uh, it's one worth pursuing. Absolutely. Because I, and, and look, I'm, I'm at a stage now, I just love, I just love working with people that, that, want, that want to improve and, and know there's another level to get to. And if I can pay, play just a, a small part in that, in that progress, then it's, um, it's, it's what satisfaction and, and significance comes from. So it's awesome. What a rewarding job. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining the Level Up Vodcast. Thank you for um, the invitation.
Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Um, now you can you can find this episode on the Level Up website, which is www.levelupconsulting.com.au. Also on our YouTube channel, but of course we will be posting it all over the socials. So we are on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, of course, we will tag Darren and Darren's business in this as well, so you can um, have a sneak peek on some of the other stuff that that Darren offers. Until next week, uh, I'll see you all then. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Jasmine.